what an honor it is to be here on Martin Luther King's birthday weekend. Um, you know, it wasn't easy to get this weekend or this day, Martin Luther King's birthday, as a national holiday in the United States. In fact, New Hampshire was the last state to make Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday a federal holiday. It took a lot of work. Uh, Arizona uh, was forced to honor it through a tourist boycott, but now it is a federal holiday, and there is so much we can take from this man, this prophet, this pioneer's life work. Just a few months ago, the National Memorial to Dr. King was dedicated in Washington. President Obama said of Dr. King, if he were alive today, I believe he would remind us that the unemployed worker can rightly challenge the excesses of Wall Street without demonizing all who work there. Well, the dedication occurred amidst the increasingly popular and increasingly global Occupy Wall Street movement. What Obama left unsaid is that King, were he alive, would most likely be protesting Obama administration policies. <laughs> Not far from the dedication ceremony, Professor Cornel West, the preacher and professor um, who grew up in Sacramento, uh, was being arrested on the steps of the U.S. Supreme Court. He said before being hauled off to jail, we want to bear witness today that we know the relation between corporate greed and what goes on too often in the Supreme Court decisions. We will not allow this day of Martin Luther King Jr.'s memorial to go without somebody going to jail because Martin King would be right here with us willing to throw down out of deep love. So Dr. Cornell West, the Princeton professor, was arrested along with 18 other people, declaring solidarity with the Occupy movement all over the world. He said, because we love poor people, we love working people, and we want Martin Luther King Jr. to smile from the grave that we haven't forgot his movement. Over the same weekend, as the dedication, the U.S. military CIA's drone campaign under Commander-in-Chief Obama launched what the independent nonprofit Bureau of Investigative Journalism based in London called the 300th drone strike, the 248th since Obama took office, according to the Bureau of the at least 2,300 people killed by drone strikes between, oh, almost 400 and Close to 800 were civilian, including 175 children. Imagine how Obama's fellow Nobel Peace Prize laureate, Dr. King, would respond to those grim statistics. Dr. King. He published a series of his sermons called Strength to Love. His preface began, this is back in 1963. In these turbulent days of uncertainty, the evils of war and economic and racial injustice threaten the very survival of the human race. Three of the 15 sermons were written in Georgia jails, including shattered dreams. In that one, he wrote, to cooperate passively with an unjust system makes the oppressed as evil as the oppressor. He revisited the idea of shattered dreams four years later, eight months before his assassination, in his speech called, Where Do We Go From, Je From Here?, saying our dreams will sometimes be shattered and our ethereal hopes blasted. Let us realize the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Earlier in that same year, a year to the day before Dr. King was assassinated, on April 4th, 1967, at Riverside Church, Dr. King gave his, well, famous address, if you listen to Democracy Now! every Martin Luther King Day, which you'll hear on Monday. Uh, not as well known as his I Have a Dream speech or his um, 
well, or uh, his mountaintop address. But it was a speech about why he opposed the war in Vietnam. Some call it the Beyond Vietnam speech, in which he said, I knew that I could never again raise my voice against the violence of the oppressed in the ghettos without having first spoken clearly to the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today, my own government. That was what Dr. King said April 4th, 1967. Those in his inner circle were saying, don't give an address against the war in Vietnam. You have won so much in this country. You won the civil rights legislation, the civil rights law, the voting rights law, the acts in 1964 and 1965. You got Lyndon Johnson to sign them. Don't take this on. This is not your war. And he said, if black or brown children are being killed, if any children are, that is my concern, he said. Well, with those words, with that speech, Dr. King set the tone for his final fateful year. Despite death threats of his close advisors urging him not to go to Memphis, King went to march with the sanitation workers. On April 4th, 1968, he was shot and killed on the balcony of the Lorraine, the Lorraine Motel. Which brings us to the movements he inspired. Deeply impacted at the time of the assassination, we can follow two young men along King's arc of moral justice all the way to Occupy Wall Street. One was John Carlos. John Carlos, the U.S. Olympic track star who won the bronze medal in the 200 meter race at the 1968 Summer Olympics in Mexico City. Carlos and his teammate Tommy Smith who won gold. You remember what they did. The most famous iconic image of, in, in sports history. They raised their black glove fists in the power salute on the medal stand, instantly gaining global fame. They each stood without shoes, protesting black children in poverty in the United States. This isn't as well known, but when you look at the photo, you see. Um, also, John Carlos wore, wore beads uh, to protest lynching in America. And he zipped up his jacket, his sports jersey, in solidarity with working people in the United States. Well, a few months ago at Occupy Wall Street in New York at Zuccotti Park, John Carlos was there, marveling at the mainly young people, but young and old, who packed into Zuccotti Park. He told me afterwards, I'm just so happy to see so many people who are standing up to say, we're not asking for change, we're demanding change. The other person is Reverend Jesse Jackson. He was with King when he was assassinated. Well, a few months ago at Occupy Wall Street, the New York Police Department seemed to be making a move on Occupy Wall Street's first aid tent, and Jackson happened to be there. He was just days past his 70th birthday. He joined arms with the young protesters defying the police. The police backed off and the arc of the moral universe bent just a bit more towards justice.